you, Ashley? Yeah. Where are you? <laughs> right here. I can't see oh, you. Oh, mommy. Hi, really? hi Ismael. <laughs> I'm okay, looking for, oh, there she is. Hi. I'm right here. Hey, everybody. everybody. Hello. This is, this is Ashley. That's my daughter, the one I was talking about. Uh, not the last round table, but the, the like first you. round table. <laughs> was that actually 20 was minutes? actually 20 minutes? It was just shy of that three minutes. Oh. minutes. See, it went by really quick. <laughs> yep. Well, that, you, you see, this is the whole thing. You know, when you guys have fun and you... Um, um, you have something to do and you want to learn something, then time goes by pretty quick. So um, from now on, what I'm going to do is uh, we're going to start uh, the, the conversation in the beginning. And I'm going to give you uh, uh, a 20 minutes to get to hang out with each other. So I'll probably start right after um, the hour and about 20 minutes. So I'll put the people in different rooms and you can hang out with each other. Uh, I just got the idea the other day on my on the on the plane ride. I said, "Man, I need to get the people more involved with each other and get to know each other." And um, and that's what I came up with. So we're gonna the first twenty minutes or so we're gonna hang out with each other and you're gonna talk to each other, ask questions about each other, and over time you're gonna get to know a whole bunch of people. Um, and it's not just gonna be on Facebook or something like that. Any other feedback about that? Was it fun? Yeah. Been a blast so far. Good. <laughs> um, our uh, question for the evening is going to be, and I'm going to have everybody um, in the same room. And um, I know there's a whole bunch of new people here. And I know we have a good group of uh, people that's been doing this for a long time. So this is actually... <laughs> They are probably the best setup we could do. And uh, the question for tonight is, what is something that you did uh, uh, what, uh, when you started the business that didn't work? And um, what did you do to fix it later on? So um, for the new people, it's gonna be um, to listen to these uh, old timers, what they've done and what they made mistakes so that you can listen and hear what happened for them and that you don't make the same mistakes. So I'm gonna open up the floor and um, I'm not gonna call out people. So I think, um, uh, I think that either of the two Steves, uh, Steve or Steven. Uh, I, I thought, I don't know I thought it's in, um, in the event rental, Steve or Steven. I, I don't know, it must be, I, I think, Steve, you've been in since 87 or something. Um, wow. I, don't know. <clears throat> I, 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 was, I was 1993, and I think Stephen was 1963. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. He's just speaking because I have so much more experience. That's, That's all you right. Know. That's right. So, <laughs> so Stephen, tell us, when did you start? I actually started in high school. I actually started at 12, 16, I owned bounces. Um, so that was in 1978, long time ago. Yeah. So, um, so uh, I know that's quite a, a while ago, but um, what, would you, what, what would you say with the experience that you have, what you see newcomers that come in the business the last, I think the last 10, 15 years, we got a lot of new people coming in. Um, what is the biggest mistake that you see they do when they start um, doing the inflatables and um, uh, party rentals? Uh, probably being afraid to grow with staff, to, to kind of lay back and uh, let the staff take over doing things. You know, they try to be very hands-on, which is great, but it stops you from being creative and growing your business because you're out in the truck. I see that a lot. You know, that's when you get to a certain point. Um, you know, I see a lot of guys that they're, they're out there with, the, I was always out there with my guys on the bigger jobs because I wanted to make sure things went well. However, I think some people are afraid to let go of the power a little bit. And that's a very hard move. But uh, I think once you can do that with the right guy, who's not your buddy, 
because you know your buddies are going to resent you eventually and because you become their boss if you can do that with somebody that you can create a working relationship with you can grow pretty fast Uh, uh, you other guys need to ask questions uh, around what he says because I have a question um, when when would they know that they can employ other people well uh, you know I I was just consulting with somebody the other day and I said to him you have to treat if you're going out on the job you have to treat yourself like an employee and charge your charge your company for you by the hour, just like everyone else. Because if you don't do that, then you don't know when you can hire someone else and step back. But if you're paying all your workers, whatever the fee may be, 10, 20, 15, whatever it is, self that same rate, after a while you can say, I, you know, I'm getting 600 a week, I can afford another guy for 400 a week. But if you don't pay yourself, it becomes a little trickier to do that. Hmm. What, is the... what about the training? How do you how do you handle the training? Like when do you know? Okay, like they're ready to go on their own instead of having two guys on a job that takes one or two different guys. So I, I can I can answer that. Um, basically, it's a matter of when you go out there, you really have you have to invest in your employees. So make sure you're investing in somebody that you know that is going to uh, going to show up. Um, one of the downsides, and I'm sure Steve will uh, test this, is that sometimes you may be training your competition down the road. You know, your best employee wants to be you. Uh, but I always do, what I do with training my guys is that I will teach them, you know, a couple of gigs. And then if I think I got a lead who is intelligent enough, I will touch nothing when we get to the next place, stand back and watch them do it. Let them go up to the client. Let them, hey, hey, Mrs. Jones, I'm here from ABC Party Rentals. You know, where do you want the inflatable? Let them, let them unload the vehicle. You know, let them get it set up. Let them decide where it is. Watch them from a distance and let them make the mistakes so you can see, you know, what they're going to be like, you know, when you're, when you're hopefully when you're not around. I think, you, I think that's the best way to, uh, to train them. I know that's how my ex-boss uh, trained me in the business. You know, he, uh, he, uh, you know, he brought me out with him a couple of times. Then I started doing it, you know, with him around. And then I just took off. Um, John, can you tell us how long you've been doing this? Since uh, 1983, 37 years wow. uh, in, the, uh, in the business. Just a few days. Um, yeah, but so I've, been, I've been around, a, you know, a long time. Notice that me and Steve have the same hairstyle. Yeah. Because every night, because every night we go, I can't believe we did this. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, it's, it's 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 been fun. I mean, I I, I love I love this. I, I tell you, tonight I got such a good feeling in my heart talking with all of you, talking about the business because uh, in New York we're not doing that much. Uh, but uh, yeah, I love this business. Um, I appreciate you coming on. I would like to see more of the uh, people that's been doing it for this long. Um, uh, um, give back to the community. Um, I think it is a good thing, uh, especially if you've been in business this long, um, to help these new people coming in. So thank you for uh, taking time to come tonight. I appreciate it. Steve, um, what is your um, response to that same question? Um, I think, I think I have a few, you know, with a, with, um, almost three decades under my belt. There's, you know, you go through these waves <clears throat> and what's crazy is sometimes you don't realize your mistakes until many years later, you know? Um, sometimes I think I'm the slowest learner or, you know, the hardest, have the hardest head. Um, you know, recently we, um, uh, we, we decided, mine would be advertising. And I think, especially when you're younger, or maybe not as business savvy, you tend to be frugal or cheap on your advertising. And you'll learn that from many of the masters, you have to spend anywhere from six to eight percent, uh, six to ten percent of your revenues on your advertising. And it's so easy to just go, oh, I'll do a few mailings here and there, I'll do a couple of trade shows. And I think everyone in this room would agree trade shows are pretty much a joke. Even you know, the special event or biz bash, you have to have something pretty unique to even appeal to that audience. 
So, you know, um, back in the day we would do SEO and I used to have the, the SEO guy I had at the time was kick ass and it, it, he was slowly kind of, you know, we weren't really getting results. And then I would be too cheap to spend money on AdWords. And I could say over the past 10 years, you know, had we spent a lot more in AdWords or really stuck to the structure of, okay, guys, we have to spend five, six, eight, 10% of revenue, whatever it is. We can't even think about that dollar amount. We just have to spend it. And, and it can be on different things. I mean, it doesn't have to just be AdWords, right? It could be AdWords, trade shows, uh, uh, you know, a phone call, you know, whatever. Um, and I think that's an area where we really could have seen better results. And that's what we're starting to do now is spend more there to get the phone ringing more. So that's, I guess that's what, one of the things that I would have to add is, is don't let the marketing slip. And especially now, you know, there's several studies from some of the, you know, best sales and marketing masters when you're in bad economies or like a situation like now, the guys that keep advertising and keep up the momentum, when this all clears, they're, they're, going, they're going to be the ones on top and the ones who, who, who didn't spend the money and said, oh, no, we can't afford it. No, we got to hold on to our money. They're the ones who typically lost in the end. So that would be my, that's my perspective. And it's just not mine. It's other, you know, other sales and marketing folks. So that's, uh, I think that's what I would say is the the biggest pearl I could offer. Who's got a question about that for uh, Steve? I do. What avenue do you think you get the best results from? Like AdWords, do you think that's your best I, result? I think right now, and you know how I said earlier how sometimes it takes a long time to figure out the system. We were doing SEO for a long time and I don't think it was the SEO. I, I don't think it's SEO that was bad. I think the folks doing our SEO were bad or not fantastic. And um, so we would do that and we would do uh, uh, direct mail, which I still, I'm a huge direct, direct mail uh, advocate of. And if anyone wants to talk to me offline about that, <clears throat> that's really how we've grown our rental business. But anyway, to answer your question, Ian, I'd say, yeah, uh, I think AdWords is the place to go because SEO, it takes a while to get there. You know, even if you start now, you're going to have the sandbox effect. You're not going to see any results for six months. So you have all that ad spend, you know, month after month where AdWords, you can get immediate results, in my opinion, uh, you know, if it's set up right. And of course, your website and your meta tags and, you know, ERS, if you're using that, everything has to, you know, be set up properly. But I think that's where you're going to get immediate results. And that's where I can tell you we're, we're spending now. So I would say AdWords. If that's some, if people could learn how to go on to Google and get their ratings up by, there's a couple of ways that you can go on to Google and relist your site and things like that. I used to do that twice a week myself just to make sure I'd be number one in our market. You know, you should treat, I think you should treat your AdWords and all that, just like anything else where you should be doing it at least two or three times a week as part of your job, because it's so important. Not that you shouldn't hire anybody, but that's the one place that you should know a little bit for yourself because it's, it's your business and you're gonna care more about that. You don't need to be an expert with website design, but I think that's an important fe feature. And I think it's important what you said, I agree. Are you talking about like the Google My Business to work on that stuff? Well, all of it and any way that you get your name out there. I'm just, I, I forget where it is now, but I know there's a place in Google I would always put in uh, the top of my web page. You know, I would open up a web page for one of my products, copy and paste it into Google with some keywords, and that was free. But the point of the matter is if there's a way you can, I have a few customers that every day that I speak to them, they're on their, uh, back end of their website, just posting a few more words so Google picks it up again. Every day, I'm just saying make it a part of your regular routine. Don't wait for someone else to just, not that you shouldn't hire someone else, but do it yourself as well, or at least get a little more involved with it. Get it listed. I agree. By the way, Steve was talking about talking offline about direct marketing and things. I still swear by postcards. 
And people say, oh, Steve, you're old fashioned all the time. Maybe I'm old fashioned, but when they put that up on the refrigerator, they don't go to the internet and find my competitors. So I'm still a fan of that, just so you know. You don't use uh, yellow pages anymore? <laughs> <It's a joke. laughs> I'm out of the yellow pages. No, but my last year was $260,000 in yellow pages. So it was a scary thing when I said no more because the internet's taken over. Yeah, I, about- I, re- I remember that year when I when I stopped doing uh, ads uh, in yellow pages. I was like, oh my God. But, uh, you know, I mean, different strokes for different folks. And I guess it's different... Uh, different strategies. I mean, one of the things is as old as I am in the business that I keep learning from uh, the newbies, uh, you know, is, is all of the new, uh, new ways of marketing for me. I, I, I'm sorry, but I love trade shows. Um, I love, I love getting out in front of people. I love getting out and and, uh, being able to talk to them. If I can get you in front of me, I can, I can sell you. Um, So, you know, I, I, I can't, I feel like it's blind out there in the internet, you know, um, Facebook, I think Facebook has got a big bang for the, uh, you know, for the buck being a part of all the moms groups and, uh, you know, I'm making sure. And then just, uh, you know, nothing, nothing is better than, um, word of mouth. And I think that's how I've uh, stayed alive for, uh, you know, as long as I have, it's because every time we go and do an event and we're, we're good from the, uh, start of the event, with booking the event, showing up on time, showing up with good equipment, having good staff, you know, uh, charging the charging a fair price, and and you know, doing everything we say we're going to do, that word of mouth uh, gets around, and those referral business is what's kept me around for as long as I've been around. So, um, you know, I, I'm new. I'm very new to this all this this all this digital and and the web. My web page sucks. My web page totally sucks. Um, I said, I haven't had, haven't really had to, uh, use it. Um, you know, this year here, I thought more about, you know, revamping it and, uh, and doing more with it. But usually when I'm very busy, I don't need to worry about the webpage. 90% of the time I use it because I can't get a, a, a paper catalog out in the mail fast enough, you know, somebody, so just go to the web, uh, there's, there's this ride, that's that, or I send them pictures and emails of, uh, of different things that I have. But, um, doesn't really matter. It's just a matter of, you know, that day there, if, you know, if I've got, uh, you know, an inflatable slide and a, and a, and a, and a inflatable uh, zip line and a, and a bumper car trailer, you know, to go, well, that's what I'm going to sell the client on that day. And I'm going to make them, uh, you know, make them, make them want that, you know, uh, to go. So I don't know, but, the, but I think the way you guys do it, you know, I'm, I'm always very intrigued with how much money everybody makes with uh, just, uh, you know, no, the non-sales person with all of these uh, websites that take the orders while people are home at night, you know, they woke up at uh, 11, 11 uh, PM and they say, Oh, Jesus Christ, Johnny's birthday is next week. What, what, you know, what, what are we going to get? Let's see who the guys are that are out there. So this is a very interesting, a very interesting uh, world for me. If, um, if, you're doing, I just, if I could just say one thing about that, is that okay? Go ahead. I don't know about the time. Okay, if you're doing a backyard birthday business and all that stuff, you should have at least five to seven years to sell that customer something. You should be able to get five years out of that backyard birthday customer, except for the fact that maybe one year they're going to Chuck E. Cheese or you know bowling or something. So what are you doing to get five years out of your customer? Because you know that they're doing birthdays, you know they're spending the money, they're going to probably want a different product the next year. So, okay, you go to the trade shows or you buy different products, but what are you doing to get them to come back to you? That's what you need to focus on because 85% of my rental business was repeats and, and 15% was new business, which we, we needed 10% a year. We wanted 10% a year because you make big bucks that way, but you should be able to keep those customers for at least five years, almost every year. So you got to say, hey, it's two months early uh, just letting you know, we got a new slide and I remember how much Joey liked the slide last year or whatever it may be. Maybe you, you can offer a deal, but those customers don't wait for your, you know, for them to go to your computer, you know, their computer and look up you again, reach out to them, find a way to get their interest, give them a deal. Early birthday cards, early birthday cards to them, to the kids. You know, you're a VIP customer, a free cotton candy machine with any two inflatables. 
We hope Johnny enjoyed his party last year. We can't wait to see you in two more months. Something. You should get many months out of them or many years. Can I say something real quick? Sure. Um, this yeah. past uh, holiday, um, I sent out uh, Christmas cards to all of our um, customers for 2020. And I got a lot of feedback like online, like I'm definitely gonna do it this year. We're coming back, we're always gonna book with you. And I didn't offer them a coupon code or nothing. They just liked that gesture of, you know, they thought about me. Um, and I, I personally put, see you in June, see you in, you know, May, see you in March, because that's when the birthday party was, you know? So it, it goes a long way when you reach out to them. They're, they're definitely going to come back. They just want something, you know, it works. Ismail, you wanted to say something? Hey, so I respect and I love these guys because, you know, I dragged them in here, Steve, Steve, and... John, but I want to hear because we're talking. We're, we're not talking age. We're talking big kids. Pam over here is real quiet, and and not everybody knows Pam. But Pam's a big dog. She's legit, and so is Lynn. I want to hear from those two ladies because those are the big kids. I know they're a crap little bigger than everybody else. So I'd love to hear from them. Just saying. I want to. You're not picking on it, but I want to pick on them. Okay, who's first, Lynn or Pam? Lynn and Pam, dude. Come on, you know who well, they are. Thank you, thank you, Ishmael, for calling me a big kid. I'm in the big city. I don't know about being a big kid up here in Chicago, but we had a really, really crappy 2019 um, with our governor. I mean, our governor shut us down. So we had to rely heavily on the backyard market. But one of the things that I would say, keeping on the subject of COVID tonight, um, the biggest mistake I made as a newbie is I went out and I bought a bunch of junk junk, I'm telling you, junk dollies from Harbor Freight and tried to deliver water slides with them. <laughs> it did not work well. So that was that was my newbie mistake. And then one of my other um, mistakes, I'm glad I didn't take too far, was giving up the backyard market. I kept a 50-50, um, you know, I kept up my backyard customers because they're the people who catapulted me into um, being able to afford to buy event equipment. So luckily I got to keep them. And in my time of need, they've really come through for me. So I'd have to say one of the things is don't give up on that backyard market, kind of keep them around and try to satisfy them as much as you do the big events. The big events are easy and fun money, but those backyard parties, especially in times of bad economies and viruses um, really kept me alive. Yeah, yeah, I, I can remember I, I got those yellow dollies in the beginning. I couldn't afford um, the expensive dollies. So I, I did the same thing and um, um, oh, you yeah. drive, drive around <laughs> the spare tires so you can ch um, change out the tire. No, I'm, yeah. yeah, it was horrible. It was horrible. <laughs> yeah, I've been there. Um, okay, Pam, can you um, tell us um, what you think? Pamela? Uh, she's having shitty signal. She may not be available, but I'm just saying, there's big dogs there. Hey, Willem, until Pam gets back. <laughs> How many speakers on? Um, go ahead, Steve. Hey, uh, Willem, I know. I, oh. um, Lynn, what dolly yeah. did, you, did you do you recommend, or what dolly? I think uh, one of the biggest mistakes that we made oh. were. Sorry about that. There you are, Pam. She just forgot to mute, unmute herself. That's all. No, I got booted off. Kobus is at it again. <laughs> yeah. Okay, are you there now? Okay, so are you ready for me now? Sure. Okay, so um, one of our biggest mistakes was holding on to problem employees for too long um, because we were afraid to replace them in the middle of the season. Um, it's it's really hard if you're 
convinced yourself that you need them so bad, but they're going to end up, you know, wreaking havoc on your life and your staff. So you're better off just doing it without them and taking that power back. Mm -hmm. So who's had that same problem? Seems like every year that you're going to have that one or two that are going to give you, the, <laughs> they're going to make kind of like make the rest of your team say like, well, if he can t do it like that, then I can too. And before you know cancer. it, you, your whole team's going bad. They're cancer. Yeah. Yep. You want to use it? Exactly. Make it your mission to eradicate cancer. That's it. <laughs> Fire them on a busy day. Show the rest. Be prepared. Dude, yes, get them to tarp clean everything. <laughs> Go ahead. Can I step, uh, yeah, Willem? Question. Okay, let's give Steve a, a chance to say. Go ahead. Uh, I know that you learned um, SEO on your own. You read books on it. Are you still doing it yourself? And is that something that you recommend for the rest of the group to learn to do themselves or hire somebody or what? What sort of input do you have with uh, doing your own SEO? Um, my suggestion would be to find somebody to do it. There's just not a lot of people that um, uh, can do it right. Uh, but that's what I would suggest. Um, I just did it back in 2012, 2013, because I had a lot of time in the winter time and I studied it myself. Um, but I would suggest that somebody um, uh, um, find, uh, there's a few in the industry that do it and find them. And um, I know David, I think he does it too. Um, uh, that's what I would suggest. What's the right price? What should we be paying somebody? Great question. That is a good question. David, where are you at, man? This is you, buddy. David, tell us what you think. Hey guys. Um, so, I mean, the pricing structure should vary depending on where you are. I mean, obviously the more money you spend, the more, the more time somebody can spend on your website, same thing like a web design or anything else. Um, it's not a once and done as most people may think it. I mean, the algorithm changes, uh, but I mean, most of the SEO you guys can do on your own is like basic on page stuff. You know I mean? Ismail talks about that a lot in some of his little roasting videos and stuff. Uh, it, it's pretty basic. I mean, at least have your content filled out. There's tons of online, you know, YouTube videos. I mean, Moz has a free course. SEMrush, I think, has one on their site. It's just enough to get the basics across. And most most fields and most industries or most cities, it, just doing that will bring you at least to page one. Now, if you're in, you know, a top market like Chicago or Austin or, you know, Orlando, you know, Phoenix, all those top big areas, you're going to have to do a little more than just basic on page and slap some metadata on there, as some people call it, of SEO. That's the number one problem that a lot of these companies are doing is they're just taking your money and not doing nothing or writing one landing page a month and calling it a day, not doing any link building or anything like that or any technical SEO or not at least encouraging their clients to build out their products. You know, conversion rates ha have a lot to do with that as well. Um, if you're not converting your customers and the bounce rate's too high, then you're pretty much just pissing in the wind. You're just spending money. Sorry, I had a question. You, you said link building. Is that both internal and external link building, right? Link building is off-page SEO. Off-page. So that is like getting other sites to link to your site. Okay. So, I mean, the basic stuff that you can do is like citations, try to get listed in as many directories as you can, Correct. like review sites. You know, your social profiles is technically a citation. A citation is like a name, address, phone number. As many times as you can mention that, the, the better off you'll be. And just build it out as best you can. You know, fill it out as much information, put as many videos, photos, whatever they, whatever kind of field you can put on there, put on there. You know, fill it out as much as you can. And that's all stuff that you can do. You know, you don't have to pay nobody to do that. I mean, if you want to, most the reason most people pay people is they don't have time. I mean, as a business owner, you just don't have enough time. So content. I mean, I, I, mean, I can tell you, I did my own SEO for a while back in the day, and then I tried to pay some people to do it because my wife was telling me I was spending so many hours on a computer and you know we just wasn't in a good spot and I tried that and that didn't work three different people four different people um, two of them were in this industry that offered it and then it was it was a joke so I went back to doing it myself and started offering it to other people because we actually do the work um, you know and get results 
It's not cheap, but it, it works. Got a I've got a question. Uh, you know, earlier Steve said six to ten percent. You can expect to pay that for advertising. What can we expect as far as if you break down the expense for SEO for paying out for that? Is there a Shoot, man? It, it it averages. Uh, for a smaller company just starting out that that wants to grow, that's doing SEO. I mean, some of those guys, their budget's way bigger than ten percent. I mean, some people we got clients that are, you know, forty, fifty thousand, but they want to grow. You know, so I mean, it's costing probably twenty, twenty-five percent of their, you know, revenue just to go to marketing. But they're also the ones doing the rentals. I mean, the deliveries too. So they're saving on employee costs in order to grow their business. And then other ones, most big companies that we do, it runs in between five and ten percent, depending on if we do the AdWords and uh, the, any any other ad marketing. And even goes lower than that for some big companies. I mean, we got some companies, you know, that are doing half a million and, and more in sales. I mean, and it's it's such a drop in the bucket for them. David, I have a question about SEO. Like, our, our keywords in this industry don't change, per se. And I know we could always do better at building content on our web pages and stuff. But when you hire someone to do SEO, and after they build the pages and the keywords are there, I mean, is there justification for keeping someone around to do SEO for years on end since the keywords don't really change in what we do? Oh, absolutely. I mean, it just depends on what you're what you're looking to do. So the way I describe it to most of my people is um, it's, it's, it's like the good old game of King of the Hill, you know, as a kid. You got to fight to get up there. You got to knock off all the bullies. But once you get there, somebody else is going to try to knock you off. I mean, we got clients that we're, we rotate number one, two, and three spots, it seems like, every other month because they're doing SEO too. Once your own page is there, after that, it's just who's going to do the more work of off page. Who's going to do more link building. Who's going to keep on at, as Steve mentioned earlier, just go through and just type a couple extra words on your website, just to show that Google looks to see that you're doing something new. That's why a lot of people did blogs back in the day. It's just that new content. That's it. But I mean, you got to start going after service cities, you know, you start going after long tail keywords. I mean, there's all kind of variations of keywords that people don't even realize you can't just put bounce house rentals on your site and think you're going to rank for everything it's not going to work how right. do you know who to choose what, what's that how do you know who to trust that, that's the biggest problem <laughs> that's why i started doing it again there's tons of, i mean I, i've tried i've tried local people before <laughs> i've tried others i mean it's just it's hard man it honestly is i mean i i've, I've tried I mean, we do our work, you know, we don't send fancy reports because we don't waste our time because I think the people that do send the fancy reports, they spend more time typing up reports and actually do work on your website. But, I mean, you know, we get results. I mean, we, we, we have, you know, people that don't have no issues with, with us. I mean, there's tons like Jeremy very cool. I know used to do it for our industry. He does it for the dumpsters now. I mean, they actually do work. But, yeah, I mean, if, if, you, if you're paying somebody that's not in this industry and – you know, they're giving you problems, it, you know, reach out to me. I, I, you know, even if you don't want to use me, I have no problem at all taking a look to give you an, uh, an idea. I do it like almost every day for people. How long does it take to see results when you hire someone to do SEO? What is a realistic expectation? <laughs> well, it, it, as the good old SEO industry says, it depends. So if you're in a big city and you have a brand new site, then you can expect six months, six months to a year but before you even start becoming any type of traffic organic wise, you can get your GMB ranking faster. If you, if you do to put the work in, you know, getting some photos from your deliveries each weekend, posting them on posts throughout the week, try to post three, five times a week. Those geotech photos send local relevance all throughout the city in your service area. And it puts it on the post. But I mean, if you're like an existing website and you've been there for years and first page, but you're just not there where you really want to be, then it could be a little quicker. Sometimes changing some on-page stuff can can make that jump. Sometimes doing some some off-page stuff to get your link building up is, is just what it needs. It just needs a, a kick in the butt. Sometimes a press release can make it happen. Just depends. Okay, so let's get back to our um, original question. Um, I think we should have a, 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 a marketing group meeting uh, sometime in the next month. So I will set that up. Um, Corey. Can I go? Oh, Corey. Corey, um, you, you started, what, in 2012, I think, 13? 
Um, so you've been doing it for quite a while too. Can you give us um, your thoughts on uh, when you started and what you did? And I know you started to do the, the bigger events and um, then you sold the zip line. So give us, a, I think you would give us a really good feedback of um, what you did and what you decided to do different later. Um, yeah, the, so, so if, if I could look back and tell myself one thing, it would be just to always know your numbers, um, you know, and just study them and make good sound business decisions based on those numbers. Um, and when I say numbers, you know, profitability, your sales, your expenses, stuff like that. Um, and then I, I also kind of along those lines of, you know, really knowing who your customer is in your service area as well. Um, you know, we're, we're not in a small town, but we're not in a town that you could easily do, you know, those type of events where they needed uh, carnival rides. Um, you know, in the zip lines, we'd have to travel. And for our business model, we just didn't want to travel to where we needed to travel to make it worth it. Um, so that's kind of why we, we actually got out of the carnival rides is it just didn't make sense for us to hold on to them and uh, you know pay the expenses to keep them just because we didn't make enough money on what we wanted to service. So I, I, I think that's, you know, and I, I think that's kind of two of my biggest things is just always know your numbers and always know your customer and who you want to service. So if um, I, I can ask you this question, um, uh, it's kind of a buzzword always with these people is I need to get big rides and um, get into the carnival rides and things like that. Um, what would your advice be for those people that wants to still do the backyard parties and all of a sudden wants to buy all these big rides? Um, I, I know for us, we, we had trouble too, because, you know, we were, we were trying to force carnival rides to our current clients and they, they just weren't having it. Um, you know, I, I think, I think for us, a good, a good judge of that would have been, you know, our direct competitors. I mean, we were, we were really only, you know, one or two companies in our area that had carnival rides and the other company actually travels the state. Um, so that, that was kind of a, kind of something that we really failed to realize was, was that, um, so, so again, I, th I think it really just comes down to really knowing your customer, you know, if, if your customers are backyards, you know, of course you're not going to have the, the carnival ride market. If you don't have any, you know, company picnics or whatnot in your area, it's going to be a tough sale too. Um, Carnival rides are big and carnival rides are expensive to, to maintain. And you know, I, I don't think they're actually that bad to insure, but it's, I don't, I don't know. It's such a tough leap. You know, if, if, if you can't do bounce house as well and you can't deliver bounce house as well, I think you're going to have issues, you know, coming into carnival rides. This is really close to the question I was going to ask. Uh, we're in a deprived area where we have to travel 45 minutes in either way to get to a town that's worth doing anything in. And what would be your way of going about avoiding a business cap? Uh, business cap would be like where if you made 20,000 on something and then you only got to keep 2,000 of it, but uh, you do a hundred thousand dollar event and you only get to keep two thousand, then you're still at the same business cap just with more work. How do you avoid that? You, you got it's it's all about what you can keep. I mean, if you're not if you're if you're working on such low margins, it's just not worth it, you know. And if you're traveling forty five minutes each way, I mean, I, I'm 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 older, right? So like I'm fifty five years old. Not that I'm that old, but I don't really want to travel very far for events. I like to. You know, I like to have some quality of life, um, you know, so I think you got to know the area which, which you set up shop in, you know, and how far away, where, where is your business? Um, we do a lot of mechanical rides, um, you know, it's, it's getting the right mechanical rides. Um, you have to be some, you have to, when you start getting the trailers and stuff like that, you have to start knowing how to maintain and operate and do all that. Uh, but getting back to what you're saying is like far away, you know, if, you, if you're doing that big of an event, you're only keeping $2,000, then 
And, you know, um, years ago, it's doing your due diligence. Years ago, I uh, approached uh, SCORE. I was going to um, buy a hot dog, uh, you know, truck. But when we got down to the nitty gritty of everything, it would have been better for me just to go get a job because I would have made more money at a job than I would have, you know, at the hot dog truck. And then there's so much more chance of, uh, of you know, liability loss um, doing it. Because if you only make $2,000 profit on that big of a job, well, one thing goes wrong and, you know, some things will go wrong. Um, and there you go. Then you could, you could be upside down on that job, you know, right away. You know, I, and I've learned too, my mechanical rides, um, that, you know, even though, even though I, I want to get them out the door, you know, and I've got lots of party planners in New York that want to, that, that, would, that try to convince me all the time to go out for less money. But, uh, you know, you're not getting my bumper cars for less than $1,500. I don't, I don't, I don't care how many gigs of gear you give me because I know when the bumper cars go out, things have to be worked on. You know, uh, I have to take my time going and setting up and doing all that stuff. So when my trailers go out, my bigger items go out. I, I charge, a, I charge a premium. If not, they sit in the yard because it's just not, it's just not worth it. I need to make enough money because, because of all the, you know, the what ifs, you know, that are, that are, uh, that are out there, you know, when you're doing it. So don't take the jobs. If you're not, if you're not turning a good profit, I, I don't think your jobs uh, should be costing you more gross than, uh, you know, maybe 25% of that gig. You know, that's the most, I think, I, I don't know, Steve, you know, from New Jersey, what do you think? Hey, Zach, for, let, let's get one thing. Were you just kind of giving a general number or are those true numbers? Yeah, it was just a general number. To, okay, so, so just, sure. just to make that clear, he was just, it wasn't that number. He was just throwing that out there. I was just very, 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 very scary number. <laughs> so, you know, yeah. Well, if I was doing this amount of work and I was making that amount of money, but then I expand and I'm still doing a, a lot of work, but I'm still only making that amount of money. That's the thing I was getting at. Yeah, for sure. And, 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 you know, I think that just goes back to, you know, number one, knowing your numbers and then number two, knowing your clientele. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Who wants to add um, something they did in the beginning and uh, that did not work? I'll go. Go ahead. Can I go? Sure. Okay. Um, I would say that one of our biggest mistakes when we started was um, our form of advertising, which was horrible, was doing low prices, like stupid low prices, like dumb, dumb, low, like $50 bouncer, normally $139, you know, because we were desperate to get customers. Um, I feel like I see that a lot with like really, really new people that are fresh that have never done this. And like, they get desperate because they don't see stuff come in. Um, and I think that that's just like the worst type of advertising you could do. No, so how, what did you, when did you find out that you should do it different and how did you find out? Well, first of all, we weren't even booking. And I was like, why would you not take a $125 bouncer for 50 bucks? You know? <laughs> like, um, and then secondly, um, thanks to forums like this, where I was seeing like the same trends of the type of customers that you were getting, um, very needy. Um, they didn't see the value in your product. Um, they could care less if you're insured or if you staked down that unit. They didn't treat the unit the way that they should have. Um, and um, I, I, I was like, I don't know what I'm doing so wrong. Um, I was like constantly questioning myself. Like, I'm like, I'm giving them great service. Like, I don't know um, why they're, it was just, it was a horrible experience with doing that, I guess. Um, but yeah, mostly like being on these forums, seeing people like having the same experiences with customers um, when they started off <laughs> saying like, 
yeah, we're going to do 70% off or whatever, or a whole week, a whole week for the price of one day or something ridiculous. <laughs> um, but yeah. So who else in the year um, had the strange strategy in the beginning to uh, go for price and was stupid low on their pricing? I'm sure out of the 35, 36 people a year, we have quite a few people that did that. Let me hear. I did. Now tell me your I, experience. I think the worst thing that I did when I first started um, was I would negotiate with customers I would say, you know, it's a hundred dollars. They're like, oh, okay, well, I can do it for 80, you know? And then they wanted it till 10 o'clock PM. And they didn't realize that I need the sun to see. Um, there's people drinking at 10 o'clock. I mean, it was just same experience. I mean, they didn't take care of the units. They would ask me for it for the rest of the, the weekend. But my worst, my biggest problem when I first started was negotiations. I always negotiated. Okay, I'll do 60. Okay, I, if you book it right now, if you put a deposit, I'll do 70, you know? And they were just the worst customers ever. I, I stopped doing that. I, I became more headstrong. I, you know, I started telling myself, you know what, they're ruining my units. I'm having to repair them, I'm having to cl clean them for a whole day, <laughs> have them, you know, scrubbed inside out. And they didn't realize the amount of work that I had to do after I picked it up. Um, so I just stopped. And, and honestly, I was very honest with my customers. I said, no, I, I can't pick it up without the sun. I need to see. And that's, uh, oh, and most of them were very, very understanding. Oh, okay. But at first I was so scared to tell them <laughs> that I that I needed to do it. But now I'm, I don't care. You know what, if you want to find somebody cheaper, go ahead. I'm not going to deal with it. Well, you can tell them yeah. that. Will, um, get this. Um, Ashley, like this is crazy. This is so cool. Um, so you, you know, I've been on these Zoom meetings for a while. This is my best friend from fifth grade that I have not seen since fifth grade. And she's yeah. in the same industry. Isn't that crazy? Like I just met her right now. Like I'm like, it's blowing my mind. <laughs> I was like, is that her? That's so, crazy. They, if anything, Willem, like um, if anything, I, I really appreciate you doing these things because you get to reconnect with like people you would have never Gosh. imagined. <laughs> well, that's awesome. Hi, Anaï, do you remember mom? <laughs> yes, I talked to her la like the last Zoom meeting till like midnight. I was like, I need to go to yeah. sleep. I can't do that again. <laughs> that's my mom. <laughs> um, who wants to add to, um, to that, that they sold their equipment for so cheap uh, when they started, there has to be more than um, the two that just uh, spoke about that. Yeah, being able to say no. Yeah. I to think that no. I did that once or twice and I had someone from, I went to a seminar in at Fedville Tech University and they, it was about marketing and how to value yourself, how to value your 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 business, but mainly how to value yourself. And I remember doing it. And I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna say I did it twice and never again. When she she made me open my eyes really really quick. So I'm gonna give kudos to her. I don't remember what her name is. She was a party planner, but um, she goes like, "Don't do that. Why? You're devaluating yourself." And it, yeah. and of course. You're, you are representing the product that you're taking to them. So if you're going to take them, if they're going to accept something for $80, well, guess what? They're going to treat it like an $80. <laughs> so yeah, I, I did that twice and never again. I'm going to be, I'm going to be honest with you. I, I twice and I didn't ever again, mm -hmm. but um, that's one of, one of my things that I wanted to add to what was my first big mistake yep. was jumping in really, really fast on 
inflatables that were above what I could handle. Mm. I'm a, a self, I was a self starter. And I think my, my biggest mistake, and I know a lot of people out there that are doing it, um, they get in over their heads. And I think I was one of that from, for about two, one or two years. So I guess talking to someone that is interested in the business, especially forums like this, you get to learn what the experiences of others. If you, you get into the business and you have a little pickup truck and you go out and you get a, a 30 foot slide, it's not gonna work. <laughs> and your, your little, you know, 150 pound person with a Harbor Freight dolly, <laughs> yeah. But I think sharing sharing the knowledge with everybody has is going to help a lot of people. Yeah, I think there's somebody now that's trying to sell a, a big slide because they can't handle it, and that is definitely an, a, a mistake that a lot of people do when they start. Mm -hmm. It's going um, on in a, ab above their heads, and that, I was like that in the beginning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Once you have two crews, then it's then you know you're okay. You can always meet up, do the job, and move on. But if it's just you and one other guy, a buddy, it's very difficult, yeah, it's especially hard. when it gets wet. Mm -hmm. yeah. It took me a while to get into the water slides, though, for the same reason that I didn't think I was going to be able to handle it. Um, at that time, my husband um, was helping as, as much as he could time-wise, um, and my son. And I think from there, we had escalated my, we got my daughter involved and um, we learned a little bit more about the water slides. And then now, now we're pretty comfortable with, with any, any size slide, yep. but it took a while. Uh, Billy, Billy Fields, can you give us your um, mistake you made in the beginning? Because I know you've been doing it for quite a while too. So you must have good information for us. I think, uh, uh, you know, actually what Steve uh, touched on was just, I didn't advertise very well. Uh, I, I started SEO, I paid somebody pretty quick to do it, but he wasn't doing worth the, worth the shit. Um, but um, I, I really did learn Google AdWords and I didn't really, um, I think we were doing okay with it, but we could have done a lot better, but I wouldn't throw in, I was scared to throw money at it. I was scared to actually, you know, spend more than $150 a month, which is, you know, it's not going to get you or $200 a month. And I still am. I'm, I'm this year. I'm, that's one of my goals is to actually get that percentage up to where we can get more units out and be, be more successful, but some kind of cheap uh, <laughs> when it comes to that. So, but I know that return is there. It's just, uh, it's, it's scary, you know, but uh, I think that was probably my biggest thing is just putting that, putting the money out there for advertising. Yeah. Can I comment on something? Uh, you know, I could, didn't have enough time to think about it before. But started out, I trusted my competitors because they were in the same business. So I was kind of figuring we're, we were the old gang. I was part of them. They were part of me because we all did the same thing. That was the worst thing I realized because they told me everything wrong to stop me from growing and taking over what they considered their business. So when I was younger, one of the things I learned was not to always trust my competitors. And I'm talking my local, local competitors, because when they bought something, they wouldn't tell me. I'd see it on the website, or they'd tell me how horrible it was while they're buying a second one. And that was kind of a lesson that I learned it from my local competition, who to this day is kind of the same way. We're all friendly, but I know not to take their words for things. Mm -hmm. Okay, who else wants to give us um, their experience? Uh, Courtney Carney, you started this last um, year. Um, tell us your big mistake that you made. I think you made one. <laughs> you didn't buy a dunk tank, so that's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> I made a lot of I'm never gonna forget about that, okay? <laughs> If there, if there is a Hall of Fame for uh, mistakes made in your first year of the Bounce House business, my name should be plastered all over that because I made a lot of mistakes. Dad, you know I mean? Number one, I bought the wrong equipment. 
I'm a guy that loves a good deal. And I found a whole bunch of good deals on a lot of equipment that was almost brand new. And the reason it was brand new is because it didn't get rented out very often. So that's how I started, you know, and I didn't know. Uh, everybody said, get combos and slides. And I'm like, oh, but this other thing is so much cooler. Look at this laser tag deal. Look at this. You know, I got, I got to what seduced by the prettiness of it all. And boom. I went and bought all the stuff and it's, I should have gone back to basics, combos, slides. That's what you need. And that's what we're going to do next year. So I'm, I'm very excited about that. And I spent all my money too early in the sales too, at the end of the year, because there's a lot of sales at the end of the year and I spent all my money early. So yeah. <laughs> but you didn't for that. Dunk tank, so that's the good. I did not buy the dunk tank, so there you go. Hey, that saved a little bit. There you go. <laughs> hey, let's talk, let's talk about the dunk tank. For being such a leader in this industry, why the hell didn't you stop me? You t you pick up me a lot, but dude, why didn't you stop me? You talking stop to me? you? Thank you. I'm talking to Willem. He's giving me so much shit over a dunk tank, dude. Why didn't you stop me? I stop a lot of noobs. I stop them all day long from making mistakes. I yell at them all the time. How come you didn't stop me when I met you four years ago? I just know. Is that that dunk tank from Richard? Yeah. Yes, Corey. You know exactly what dunk tank it is, dude. I think what you come on, get it out. Get it out of your system. The inflatable dunk tank. <laughs> An inflatable dunk tank? Pictures yeah. are doesn't happen. An inflatable oh. dunk tank, seriously? I actually thought that was a pretty cool unit. I, I will post the video. I'll post the video. <laughs> oh my god, I gotta see this. I've never I I have been here a long time. I've never seen that. And if I did, I bought it. We all and make mistakes, but uh, you two, Corey and Willem, you guys could have stopped me and you didn't. What kind no, of leaders are you? You said you love that thing and you yeah. were powerful with him. That's, when that's, you get screwed that bad, you better yeah. say you love that thing. <laughs> no, that is so stupid. And you're like, no, it's going to be so cool. It's the best thing ever. And we're like, no, dude. That's funny because I, I don't remember you saying that. So, <laughs> I'll send you the screen. We're going to get a good like thread going of the dump tanks that we see from the insurance standpoint. No, we dude, see you some, haven't seen this. We see some scary looking units <laughs> sometimes. And it's like, they're like, yeah, this is our homemade dump tank. You're like, what did you make this out of? <laughs> dude, this thing's harmless. This thing couldn't hurt anything. <laughs> oh, man. It didn't work. The trackless trains. That and trackless trains, people would do some of the craziest things I've ever seen to try to make yep. it into a trackless yep. train. Oh, my right. God. I literally think he was like, hey, I have some extra vinyl. I'm going to sew it together and see what idiot will buy it. <laughs> Damn. Wow. That's messed up. Last speech. I'm still trying to find it online. I can't even find it online. Where did you buy it from? Superior. Superior inflatables. Superior inflatables? I got to find this. I'm sorry. I've never, I've never seen this. <laughs> Yeah. And it could be used indoors. Hey, 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 hey. Me, Keep Chris? it up, Willem. I, am, I know where your first jumpers came from, dude. I know where you started. And I know Corey's mistakes, too. You guys have done quite a couple as well. Just saying, you didn't stop me. You should have. Uh, all right, let's continue. Um, we have uh, like 10, 15 hey. minutes left. Um, let me... Uh, who, who, who has not said what... Um, um, they did mis mistakes in the beginning. There's a few of you that I see that haven't responded yet. So I'll go. I um. Red Atlantis. What's your What's your hobby? Favorite color? <laughs> we don't know you, dude. Come on. Megan, Megan, you you can go. Yeah, I'll go. I've been in um in this business for about five years now. Um, <clears throat> when I first started off, I went through the financing, through the uh, manufacturer's page. And I didn't realize till afterwards, I essentially paid double for the units uh, mm -hmm. for my first two. And that's something I would definitely take back. I don't finance um, anymore from this point on. Did you do the lease payments or um, what kind of- Yeah, it was a lease, it was, it was a lease payment. Um, I also went through Blastone, which was a newer manufacturer. So I want to say my first two units probably weren't the best units for me to go with. Um, they're actually topless. So in the hot summer sun, they don't work out so well. 
Well, and she's touching now actually that nobody has really brought up is uh, the quality of units that people buy in the beginning. Because I see almost every other week somebody posts about buying something from Omega or any of those Chinese companies. So who of you guys have done that? I've gotten used units. Omega, second <laughs> customer. Are you asking who's bought from overseas companies? Um, Chinese companies uh, like Omega. Well, uh, this company did make in China. Uh, Moonwalker Sales was my first incredibles. Um, I actually still have three of them, and this is my 17th year in business. They were made in China. They were made by Iceberg over in China, and uh, but I would never do that again. Uh, the, just I've seen uh, competitors here that have bought from China, and you you can see the difference. I mean, it looks the the pictures look great in our in our groups. You know, even Omega's pictures look that you know it looks awesome. They just look beautiful. But the crap you, though, you can you can see when you see them in person, you don't want to do that. But I still have I still have one, two, three from Moonwalker Sales. They're 17 years old and they were from China. They started making them in Florida, Mark. Was, uh, yeah, they were making them in Sanford, Florida. Yeah, Mark, Mark Harper was making them out of Sanford. But he quickly learned to move to China to to double the his gross. Sadly, China got up to him, but that's another story. Well, Jennifer, can we get Jennifer to um, tell us what you say? Jennifer? I'm, oh shit! I'm trying to drive. Jesus Christ! Sorry, <laughs> I almost got in a car wreck. That would have been smart. I'm trying to drive my kid to baseball practice and do the Zoom call, and I don't know where the hell I'm going. Um, yeah. So the things that I did um, at the beginning is we undercut our competitors trying to get business, and we have spent 11 years trying to catch up to that. And now we've got a new guy in the area, not really, not really a new guy, but another competitor in our area who is in the EPA also, and I think he's also in the pro. And he doesn't really necessarily undercut us, but I think he serves a different market. And it's hard, it's hard to like necessarily differentiate ourselves because he's buying from Jeff Barnes, she's buying decent stuff, but he's selling it for 30 to 40 dollars less than us. So I would um, have a, taken more time to evaluate pricing before I um, set pricing. That would be my biggest thing that I did. And the second thing I didn't do from the beginning was accept credit cards. Thank you, everyone. Um, any anybody else? John Michael, you haven't said anything. Yeah, hey, I'll, I'll say some stuff. I was about to unmute myself. Um, John Michael Williams, Huntsville, Alabama. i uh, been in business for four years. Alabama's been pretty good, even though the pandemic happened. We had 20% growth this year, so... Uh, but talking about things that I would have done different, uh, like a lot of people, I took out a business loan when I started. So I financed uh, a lot of the inventory we, we first bought and started with. Uh, my first year and a half to two years, we had paper bookings on calendars. I uh, kept trying to save money, thinking ERS, um, inflatable office, what's that? Didn't know much about it. Uh, had a lot of mentors. Ishmael's in here. Uh, he was pretty good. Uh, Miss Land's been good to me. Hey, Miss Land. <laughs> but, uh, you know, looking back, like a lot of you, I thought this this the past year was going to be great. I bought for 80 foot obstacle course because a lot of our schools were going to be booking those for field days into your parties. 
Uh, and of course, all that fell through with the pandemic. And this past year, we bought a trampoline bungee. Ishmael, you know, he was, you were getting on to him or about <laughs> buying the uh, dunk tank. You know, he didn't, he wasn't there to mentor me out of that one, I guess. I saw the trampoline bungee and said, I got to have it. It was a good oh, price. And crap. We didn't have, uh, <laughs> we didn't have events like we thought we would, of course, last year. Um, that may be something I put up for sale this year. <laughs> but, uh, but no, looking back at it, it's, it's been good for me. Uh, I still have my full-time job. Um, like you said earlier, or somebody said earlier, you got to let go of your business and let people actually go out and do the job. And I've had a lot of good help. You know, I know a lot of people complain about not having good help, but I've had a lot of good college guys and then seniors in high school that want to work, which is kind of hard to find these days. Um, and they actually show up and work when they say they're going to be there. So, but uh, other than that, you know, I don't know that I would go back and finance again, and I would definitely start with ERS from the beginning because I could definitely see where it would have benefited us in the long run. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> Steve, uh, Steven, Steven wants to add a, a comment to the backyard parties and the rides. Um, Steven, can you um, um, say that? Uh, yeah, when uh, many years ago, um, people used to call us for the parties as opposed to just the internet. And they were always asking for rides and my competitor had rides. So I was losing my backyard bounce houses because I didn't have a trackless train or a little carousel or these small little rides. And that was kind of the signal. I started actually renting from Sammy that most of you know from Royal Trains. He hated coming down because he was two hours away, but he'd come down for 600 bucks for a carousel not to train at the point, but the whole point of the matter was um, we needed to add those rides to keep our customers where I know some of you were saying it, you know, the backyard bounce party business. Well, not every ride is difficult. Also, I got to tell you as an owner of 32 mechanical rides in my fleet for my rental company, I hated my Euro bungee. It was a great money maker, but I hated it. Why? Because you had to have specialty people that understood where the cables go. It wasn't my favorite piece to put together. That's, you know, kind of a thing. There were other rides like that as well. My mind winder, which was made by highlight. It was a big ride. It was almost too big, but I charged Dexter for it. I charged a premium because I knew it didn't had to go out with three people and I really didn't want to send it out, but it got me the bigger jobs. Um, but if you're just looking to stick with backyards, there's a lot of kind of rides that you could get, like the trackless trains. They're simple to do. You know, they're not difficult. They're not rocket science, like a little carousel. Okay, little they don't- Little dragon. Play. What's that? A little dragon ride. Thank you. Yeah, our little dragon ride. It goes in a circle Cute. up and down, 110 electric. But the whole point of the matter is there are things that you could do that not, are not gonna drive you nuts and be heavily mechanical problems for you. So, and they, look, you're, you're going there anyway. What can you tow behind? Try to make as much money out of every party. I would rather stop three times in a day than 10 times in a day if I could find a way to get more money. And a mechanical ride could be 600 to a thousand bucks more than you'd be making. So if you buy the ride at the right price, there's a market for that. Mm -hmm. Please don't make your own trackless trains. <laughs> <laughs> well, you don't, you don't you don't like uh, pickle uh, pickle barrel uh, trains? Oh yeah, the, uh, the the fifty five gallon drums that just have oh, the, the tops God. cut off of them. Just they don't even crazy. put any rubber around the edges; it's just sharp edges. So oh, I love it. That's it. Love that's it. awesome. <laughs> hey, hey there's two there's two people that have them over here in North Carolina, and they pull them with super nice tractors, and they they are out everywhere. Yeah, My husband and I it. were saying like, we need to get one. Yeah, don't they were hate asking it. me for one. I said, like, I don't have it. That's not mine. Ty I makes so much it. money off those. So don't Make hate money. the game. <laughs> yeah. Come on, Ty. Show us the video. Don't dude. knock it till you try it. <laughs> That's right. Don't knock it till you try it. Ty no has way. a bunch of those. No yeah, way. Watching the video. Hey, Ismail, is water supposed to dump on you that dunk take? Or what's the point of that one? <laughs> <laughs> I saw that. I'm embarrassed for you. <laughs> Hey, Ishmael, did he uh, let you sign it when he stitched up the last piece, or was that extra that you wouldn't pay for? <laughs> he paid like $2,000 for that thing. No. How much? He paid $2,000, I think. It was $2,200. Oh, okay, that's not so bad. I, I like the demonstration video. The guy, the, the guy can't uh, tie his pants. 
<laughs> Who didn't notice that when we sent it out there? I mean, it's ridiculous. You, you see, Ismail, you were looking for this tonight. <laughs> Um, all right, um, I, I'm going to give two more people to give us uh, their thoughts about starting and uh, mistakes they made, and then we're going to close up for the evening. So two people that haven't said anything yet. Beverly, do you want to tell us what um, you did? Um, we would get with ERS sooner and not try to do everything on pencil and paper. And... Um, just reiterating what some of these others have said to you know, buy quality from the start. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Uh, who else? I can say something. Go ahead. Um, I would, an error, a mistake I've made is not listening. I think a lot of times, like being hard headed, I think uh, I had Isma as a mentor in the beginning and I give him a hard time. Uh, like, I, I didn't listen. And now when I look back, I'm like, all the things that he was saying were like, all right. And now it's like, I'm into the business like two, three years in. And I'm like, whoa, that was all actual knowledge that I just, you know, put to the side. And there's a lot of things on the forum, on the EPA, ERS group, where like, they put it out there and you're like, no, I'm going to do it my way. And then you do it your way, you mess up and you're like, wait. I'm gonna give it a shot how they were saying. And that's Google ads, that's SEO, that's everything that was said today. You know, I think the best advice I would say is just listen and actually use the things that were said in, in this uh, Zoom meeting. Don't be stubborn. So tell me, um, why didn't you not listen? Was it just stubbornness or did you think you know? What was the reason? Um, stubbornness and I think, um, a lot of times, I think just as humans, we like to do things our own way and then like know for ourselves it doesn't work. But obviously people do it because it did work. So um, yeah, that's, that's, I think that's a mistake a lot of people make. Maybe just me. I don't no, think I'll make you Emmanuel. I was kind of like that. And I think like um, through my journeys, I found a lot of people who acted like they knew what they were talking about but you could tell they really didn't like I had a guy one time tell me his business does like 120 grand and he has four people full-time and I just looked at him like you're crazy like well, that doesn't even add up um so it's really nice to be here and you know meet all these new people in the industry and really get some good feedback you know the people on here know what they're talking about so it's nice they do <laughs> I mean I don't know if I'd agree with that like look at this man beside me <laughs> So who wants to um, give us a final thoughts? Maybe two or three people. Um, Steve and Steve, um, I will let you two. And John, why don't we do that? Steve and Steve and John, they're the three guys who's been doing this the longest. Uh, give us a wrap up, uh, last little thing that you would um, uh, advise people that start in the business or even have done it a few years, uh, what they should um, do different. And either one of the three of you can start. <laughs> well, okay, I'll, I'll go. Um, basic, basically, you know, what someone was saying about listening. I mean, as you know, many years I've been in the business, I still listen. I mean, I, mean, I, I get ideas from uh, people that are brand new in the business. I look at that, I go, wow, hmm, let me try that out. So um, never, ever, ever stop learning. Don't, don't close your mind, even though you think you know the best way of doing something, you know, it's always good to take a look and see, you know, how somebody else is doing it, you know, and, uh, and of course, you know, um, I know that, that a lot of people pro probably feel don't help out your competitors at all, but I got to tell you, I mean, in my area, I work for probably about 60 to 80% of my competitors, you know, they call me up for the mechanical rides, uh, they call me up, they call me up when, their units are sold out or I call them, you know, if they've got something uh, special. So, uh, you know, definitely, definitely don't think about your competitors as your enemies. Try if you can get along. One of the things that, uh, that I say in my area, if you're not working Friday, Saturday or Sunday, it's not because of something that I'm doing. It's because it's something that you're doing. So, um, so, you know, work with your competitors, 
um, and never stop learning. Mm -hmm. John, when you just said that you uh, give your ride, do you, do you actually make the money when you do, when the competitors call you, or do you let them use your equipment? Oh, no, 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 no. Um, I, it, it have to be a really, really tight buddy that I know his operation inside and out before I would let him, you know, use uh, my equipment. I mean, I'd have to know he had insurance, a similar piece, you know, I mean, motors, you know, um, there's guys that have come up from uh, Queens that thought that I wouldn't help them out at all or came from Rockland, New York, which is a, probably an hour or two hours away from uh, their operation to where I am in my area doing an event at a place that I normally do an event at and their motor goes bad and they, uh, and they call me, you know what? I help them because I hope that if I'm out that far away, you know, in, in their area that I can give them a phone call and they'll help me. So I, I like to, I like to, uh, I like to make uh, friendly competitors. Uh, but no, I, 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 tr I really do not like giving out uh, my equipment. I lent, uh, you know, somebody, uh, a dunk tank, it wasn't an inflatable one. Um, I let somebody a dunk tank and, uh, you know, he uh, brought it back late. And uh, like, I'm talking about late, like a week or two late. And, uh, you know, it had a nice uh, fiberglass, it had a nice crack in the fiberglass that uh, he never, he never uh, replaced. So he burned a bridge, uh, but, you know, he was a guy that knew how to work trailers and, you know, mm -hmm. fly trails for me and help me out. I would never yeah, do that. Yeah, 17 years in the business with me, and I, I agree with you. I've helped competitors that have come over from Orlando to do events. Um, you talked about a motor, and it's very, it's a very simple thing. Um, I didn't charge them. They actually, I do a Halloween party that a lady rents 13 inflatables from me every year for a two-hour party. I have to have 13 attendants. Well, they did an interactive party. I don't have big rock walls and that kind of stuff. So they rented from Events Masters or something out of Orlando. They came over, their motor blew on one of the mechanical bulls, you know, the pit that they fall into. They called me wanting to, to rent one. I, well, I knew they were doing my customer, but I couldn't do the event. I took the motor to them, set it up, the motor on it, made sure it was working. They left the motor there for me. I went back and picked up. They also left an envelope with 75 bucks for my hassle, which nice. I wasn't going to charge them. But you, you are making a very good point for the people that are in here, That, which I heard a couple say they're only two, three years into the business. You you can't make friends with all your competitors because you just got them some competitors that are just, they, they're not, you, you just can't make friends with them. They, they don't care. They're in there to, they're in there to go cheat, to beat you to whatever it is. But then you have the real competitors that have are big companies. They're in there. Like you are, you, you do want to have the ability to be able to call those people like you were, were making the point. You know, uh, so to, to the newbie people, I would say, yes, that is extremely good advice to be able to have a some, even if it's only one competitor that you have a connection with out of five, it, it, it makes a difference. I mean, it, it, it gives you a good name. They help you, you help them if needed. You know, hopefully none of us will ever have to call somebody for help. But if we do, you want to have that person there. So I, I, I agree with everything you said, John, as extremely good advice to people that's, that's coming up. Very good advice. Thank you. Steve. Um, so I have a question. Sure. Go oh, ahead. sorry. I need to raise my hand. I had a competitor just call me the other day. And I hate <laughs> to make bad relations with the competitor, but they asked me to essentially cover their event on my insurance because their insurance had lapsed. No, 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 no. I, no, no, no. I know, I, I, didn't, I didn't do it. I didn't do it. However, I, I mean, I called Casillo just so I could 
cover my back and I knew that they were going to say no and I wasn't going to do it anyway. But now I feel like I've damaged this relationship and this is a huge national company. They've got they've got huge businesses in probably 12 or 15 major markets. And I'm worried about how is that going to affect my future relationship going forward or should I just say screw it? There's things I think that you that you may or I, I I wasn't part of the situation, so I I really can't answer. And if they're that major, I don't know how they they couldn't rectify the situation. I think that if you had similar pieces, you know, to to them, I think that you know if you went out and did the job yourself with your equipment and they compensated you for that, that might have been uh, you know a plan B for them. I only but, had I only had. Um, one exact item and one comparable item. The rest was some random weird stuff that I didn't have. But yeah. Jennifer, were they asking you to use your insurance and they do the event? Is that what yeah, you Yeah, they wanted, they wanted me just to cover the event and act like it was my equipment and let them go perform the money. And the exact words were, I'll pay you whatever you want but I just don't want to lose the event. Yeah, no, I would not. I, I said, still would not uh, do it. I said, I, so I didn't just say no to his face. I said, let me, I said, let me get back to you. And I, I called the insurance just to have an email to back me up, but I wasn't going to do it anyway. Yeah. But well, that's I just don't have to repair that out. relationship because this is a huge vendor and we do sub a lot of stuff from him. We sub like trains and, and we sub like really large slides and I'm just, <laughs> worried that we're going to have this relationship issue and i mean and i just if don't know that really big of a company jennifer i think they should respect you for for you he's standing shady. up for your own self he's huge but he's shady yeah then i would not i yeah, would not i, would, I, would I wouldn't lose sleep on it at all yeah i mean come on i mean he's got to understand i mean he's, <laughs> he's, he's that big he really really should understand don't don't don't, don't let uh don't let bigger companies uh, push you around like that. I, another thing, I don't know if you have a partner or not, but uh, but sometimes what I will say, if somebody, even though I, even though I don't have a partner, um, if somebody says, "Hey, can I do X, Y, Z?" and I'm in their contact, hey, yeah, let me speak to my partner about that. Yeah, you know, I spoke to my partner and uh, and he just doesn't, you know, I, I would help you out, but gee, my partner and I started arguing about it, so I'm really sorry. I just can't do it. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, that, that, try, try I mean, even though he knows it's just me and my husband, and he, he was our mentor when we got in the business, so I think he feels like he can kind of um, push us around a little bit. And I, but I don't know. You make the right call. Working with working with competitors friendly is good, but you you you, you can't bend over backwards. No way. Blame yeah. the insurance guy. I mean, and it was literally at um, yeah, it was literally a <laughs> co phone call I received at. 2 30 mountain time and my insurance closes at five eastern time and he had known about the event all week long so he was just trying to that's know, and that's something that's something you could have said right away was blame the insurance guy say I, you know i try to get everybody over at casio but they won't answer the phone they must all be on vacation which which, which right. is not a hard stretch on a friday afternoon for a for an insurance guy what, right? What's wrong with the route of you actually stepping up and saying that you don't want to do it? Though? Why are we lying? Well, she she is trying to she is trying to save uh, save the relationship, is what she said. So okay. I, why, I don't see anything wrong with that at all. Uh, why why do would we want to save the relationship though if we're going to lie about it? I mean, I mean, that's, that's I, I mean I, it's not that I don't want to save the relationship or do save the relationship. I mean, the guy's kind of a douchebag to be honest, but well, they, you, I you, don't you want to question. Be, I don't want to be the asshole who's like not trying to work with him because every once in a while I do need a trackless train or I do need a big 35 foot slide and I don't want him to say no screw you because you, did everything right. you called your yeah. insurance company they said no you told them no that's it no he's not gonna lose you over that you did the right thing he'll respect you even if he doesn't tell you that uh, and if he's using you just because he needed to do it and he was being shady, don't worry about it. He'll still come back when he needs something that you have. Yeah, I mean, good point. A good point. I just, I just, sometimes I just feel bad because I'm trying to be honest.
Don't be. No is an okay word to say sometimes, especially in a rush. I always tell people when I'm talking, I say, if they need an answer right now and they're putting me under pressure, the answer is always no, because I'm just not going to take the risk anymore. No is not a bad answer. And people will respect it even, they'll probably respect you more and you just don't realize it because now they know you're somebody who has a little integrity or that you're professional, that you're able to stand up to them. Yeah, very, very good point. Very good point. And and my city that he tried to bully to get them to bend their restrictions knows that we're on the up and up. And, you know, he's he's told me before some shady stuff with insurance. So I was I was pretty confident in my decision. So uh, thanks for making me feel better. Cool. Uh, Steve. Um, I think it would be you know, I'm, I'm looking at this square with all these pictures in it, right? We're all looking at the same picture. <clears throat> and imagine those are your direct competitors in your, in your hometown. So you're all renting the same thing, right? More or less. So how do you be di different? And I think we're, sometimes we lose that customer service, that customer approach. And I think it's really important to, to stay, to have that human interaction with these folks and call them regularly, email them, whatever. And I'm as guilty as hell. You know, we have a few different businesses and I would love to talk to every single one. And, you know, we rely on our salespeople to do it or whoever. And we never really know how those salespeople are doing <clears throat> or, you know, or sometimes we do know and, and we don't replace them. And, and then our co companies get bad customer service. I mean, we're even known, we're guilty of that. But, you know, when I, when I make a, uh, you know, I think John mentioned this, when you make that human interaction with them and you can sell them and you get excited about it and here's where we're going to put the bounce house and here's where the tables and chairs are going to go in the tent. And then we're going to do this and we're going to do that. And you get excited about it, dude, they're going to hire you in a heartbeat opposed to the guy who's just the, you know, the uh, hiding behind the keyboard or the website, you know, they, it's like, you know, so I think that making that connection is hugely important. I think we all overlook that. It's kind of like, uh, you know, I know a lot of us who are on ERS or other platforms. It's like, you know, screw it. I just want them to call or uh, book online. I, I don't want to talk to them. I don't want to deal with it. And I get it. You know, that's, that's, that's a great business model and to be profitable and you don't have to deal with uh, <laughs> maybe a bad customer service or bad follow up because the computer system is doing it for you. But to do both, I think is, is hugely important. And I'm working on that every day in my own businesses. So I'm, I'm no saint with that. But I think if I could offer one thing, it's like, dude, we're, we're all human here. We got we to gotta make that interpersonal connection with them. And especially now, you know, um, uh, a few months ago, I was, I don't know if I'd say I was bored, but there really wasn't much business coming in. And so I just started picking up the phone and talking to folks who I haven't talked to in years, you know, or people that didn't even know me. And they, you know, they felt really um, receptive and I think appreciative that I was reaching out to them and, um, you know, to ask them how they're doing and how their business is doing and how, how, you know, it's hard on all of us. Right. I mean, we're all suffering. And so that they, they know that you care. I think it's important. So if, uh, if that's the, Last pearl I can leave you all with. I think that's uh, that's an important part of all business. Yeah, yeah, that's great advice. Thank you, Steve. Uh, Steven. One thing I, I learned in, even in my life was run your own race. Um, don't, you know, you're gonna have competitors and you're gonna have peers. They could be the same, they might be different, but focus on what you want out of your business, not what your competitors are always doing. That could be a bad mistake because you have different goals. So what do you want? Do you want to work nine to five at this business? Do you want to work seven days a week? Or do you want a part-time job and make a little extra money? That's, you have to decide what you really want this business to be. And if you want it to be a multi-million dollar business, it can be, um, but you can't just, serve one fish meal at your restaurant. You're gonna to have to diversify unless it's the best fish meal and nobody can get it anywhere else. So you have to figure out number one, how you wanna run your race. And if you wanna build on your business, one of the things 
all my years in the rental business and in the event businesses, I'm like, what are they having at the party that I could be bringing that I'm not bringing? And I got space in the van or in the truck. What else can I throw into the truck? So that's a very important thing for you to keep in mind. If you want to grow your business, don't be stuck on just a bounce house, you know, unless you just want to do that, that's fine. But if you're looking to grow into something else, what else can you bring that you enjoy bringing or that you don't enjoy bringing and you don't care because your guys are going to do it for you. So you have to decide what size you want to be. You can attain those goals. I built a multi-million dollar business. It's not a brag. I'm sharing, but it can happen. It can ha I know there's a couple of others on this site that have done the same thing. The other thing is it is important in this day and age of computers that you still get to know people. I know people that don't buy from me because they hate me and they don't even know me. And then I know people that love me, that say, I love you. They would kiss me on the cheek every time they see me. So get to know your customers, let them know who you are. That can help. Some people will say he's a phony, he's real, but other people are gonna love you for who you are and they're gonna take to that. Gee, you know what, we have a party. What can we use Ishmael? Oh, it'd be so nice. Let me call him up, see what he has that he could bring to our party. It's not even about the item, it's about the personality like Steve was saying and other people have said. So keep that in mind. I think it's very important in this day and age. If you call a customer before you do a delivery and you could say, you know, oh, what's the kid's name? You get to the house and say, hi, Bobby. Oh, we got a special thing for you. Enjoy your day. How was your party, Bobby? Or whatever it is. Those things, that guy's going to remember you. I had workers, a customer, and my workers had to stay with the bouncers back in the day, not anymore. But I still had customers that would call and say, can you have Larry the driver come out? because that's how much of an impression a driver made on them, that it had to always be Larry. And you don't think Larry felt good about himself and got an extra $25 tip. Sometimes they got tips bigger than their job. And then he started selling insurance. So, <laughs> just saying. <laughs> so my, my whole point is run your own race. Look at your competitors, fine. Look at what they have, but build it based on your knowledge. Build it based on what you think will be added to your package. Don't worry so much about them. Yes, you're going to lose some jobs, but you're also going to gain some that they never had. So that's my advice. Well, that's that's great advice. Thank you, um, um, Stephen. Um, all right. So every Monday night, uh, we're going to do this at the same time, same place. Um, I know there's a, quite a few of you that's been here every uh, Monday night. Uh, set your clock. I've got my clock set for like 10, 15 minutes before the time. Uh, I appreciate you guys coming. Uh, my whole goal with uh, these Monday meetings is to have different people um, uh, that we share information with each other. Maybe tonight they said something, you picked it up. Um, two weeks from now, they say something else that you pick up and you use it in your business. So the whole goal is for us to learn. And I can tell you, I've been doing it for like 10, 11 years. I learn something every single time. And I know somebody said here earlier, uh, doesn't matter how long you've been doing this, you still learn from somebody else, the mistakes they make or something new um, that they're doing that they haven't done in the past, uh, something like that. So um, I do put this on uh, YouTube. Uh, my request for you guys is to, whenever I load it up onto YouTube, to go and like um, the YouTube uh, video um, so that we share this with other people. I know there was a guy um, a week ago or so that responded by saying um, he watched one of these videos and that motivated him to go and buy a mechanical ride. Um, so the, this is the whole goal of this is to motivate people um, and to teach people and um, help people like in the beginning when they um, do low pricing that they come on year and can watch all these videos. I'm, I'm uh, put all these videos on YouTube. Um, so there's hours and hours already on there and they can come uh, on there and uh, just learn. Uh, there is no other place that they can do this in a very short uh, period of time. So my request for you guys is please go and like those videos when I put it on and um, uh, I will uh, do this one tomorrow and I'll post it on, um, uh, on the EPA and um, please go just go and like it and share it with other um, friends 
and like my YouTube channel so that we can um, get this information to more people. The, the second thing, part of our evening is um, some of us are gonna jump off and go do something else. There is a whole bunch of people that usually stay afterwards and that, that is like our afterwards uh, party, um, a virtual uh, get together. And then you guys can talk to whatever you want I think one night, uh, three hours after we finished, people were still talking to each other. Um, so that's your time. I'm going to leave. I need to get in bed. It's um, uh, 5 a.m. in the morning here where I'm at. So I need to go sleep. And um, hey, I have one thing to say real quick before we sign off. Yes, Glenn. You guys are looking for content marketing, specific content marketing tomorrow, Tuesday, January 19th is National Popcorn Day. And that is for real. It is National Popcorn Day. You guys adjust your content, post pictures of your popcorn machines, whatever. It's popcorn day. Take advantage of that. It's tomorrow, Tuesday, the 19th. It's today where Cobus is at. But anyway, something different for your content. You want content? There's content right there. Popcorn day. Yep. Um, any anybody wants to add something else before I stop the recording and um, let us everyone everyone makes mistakes not everybody wants to admit them I posted a photo in the EPA a post from 15 years ago from when I was doing jumpers for 49 bucks I'm just more open and honest to a lot of people we all screw up and if you guys are new and you're screwing up just learn from the people that are not new anymore so we've been there. We've done all the mistakes. We bought all the crap, including the inflatable dunk tank. Some guys have built um, a penis-shaped inflatables. Well, I don't know. So, you know, people. <laughs> ah, you thought I was going to mention that. Yeah, Everybody like, screws up. I know a guy who know? bought his jumpers. He signed I know a, off. He signed off? Okay. I know a guy who bought his jumpers from Walmart and rented them for a couple years. And his wife was like, hey, what the hell are you doing? I'm just saying. I'm looking at you. We all make mistakes. Just try to learn from the others. There's a bunch of big dogs here. There's a bunch of them. And some of them are like, I'm looking, I can count 150 years of experience here. Watch what the hell they say. Read everything they say. The one's nodding. That's a big dog. When she talks, you listen. That's it. So we all screw up. Try to screw up less from our mistakes. Because I just realized I've been doing it almost 15 years now too. So we all screw up. That's it. Okay, guys. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys.